Okay, so in this walkthrough, I'm going to walk through how to use AWS Elastic Beanstalk to deploy a .NET application. Uh, so again, you know, we're going to be utilizing Elastic Beanstalk, which simply is platform as a service as a way to, to quickly uh, stand up applications, uh, and it handles most of the heavy lifting in terms of, which, uh, in terms of AWS resources and such. Uh, so again, it's really kind of geared towards developers to kind of in a quick way to just deploy an application out. Um, and then again, everything is handled under the covers. There's really not much that uh, you need to do, although you have the ability to go in um, and tweak um, the stack that gets created. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So a few things we'll have to do before we get into the actual deployment is, uh, first off, is we need to make sure we set up the security appropriately so we can get access to Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, so again, as, it, as kind of everything we talked about, it's always a good practice to create specific accounts uh, and specific uh, groups to have you, to give you just exactly what you need to do it. Um, you don't want to give somebody full access to everything. So well, here I've done is I've created an account called me uh, underneath my, my root account um, for AWS. And then within there, I've set up permissions, uh, I've created a group called developer. And I, for right now, I've just assigned uh, AWS Elastic Beanstalk full access to that uh, group. And so this will give us what we need to go ahead and deploy to Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, so we've got to do that. Second thing is uh, we need to set up some additional security credentials uh, in order to be able to access the APIs from within Visual Studio 2019. Uh, so you have, so if you go to security credentials and drill down here to create access keys, um, you can create a new set of access keys. Uh, you can do up to two, so it'll let you have two per account or per, per, per user account. Uh, so you go ahead and create that and uh, make sure we store off the uh, CSE file or record the secret access key because once you leave the screen, you can never get back to it. Okay, so I'm just going to download it um, to my my <clears throat> I'm download it or to my downloads folder. So you can kind of see that here, and then we should be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and, and move over to Visual Studio and see how that looks. All right, so here we are inside of Visual Studio 2019. Uh, so one thing that you'll want to do in here is after you have VS 2019 installed. You're going to want to install the uh, tools for AWS, uh, and the way, you, and, and that'll give you access to this AWS Explorer, which we'll get, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but to, in order to install this tool, you're going to want to go to Extensions, Manage Extensions, and uh, search for AWS Tool uh, Toolkit. Uh, so if you, if you go over here to Search, and I've already have it installed, so I'm going to do it twice. But if you come in here into AWS and hit Search, uh, you'll see it pop up. You'll want to go ahead and do that install. Uh, it'll, re it'll require you to close out of Visual Studio and come back in before it shows up. Uh, once you install this toolkit, uh, you'll have access to this AWS Explorer, and you can get to that. If it's not immediately showing up for you, uh, you should be able to get to it from uh, within the view uh, menu, so you can get to it from here. All right, so um, in here is where you're going to set up the profiles to kind of connect you to the API. Now, remember a, a few seconds ago, we, we went ahead and created uh, some access keys. Um, so in order to uh, allow the API to kind of know who you are, what rights you have, we need to provide that, that set of access keys and create a profile. Uh, by default, you get one called, by default, his name is default. Uh, and I'll just edit that. Um, and what you're going to do here is, and this is an old one that I had in here, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, you're going to take that access key and secret key that we downloaded, and you're going to want to you're going to want to populate that into uh, into this into this dialog. So I'm going to go ahead and take what I had what I got from AWS just a few seconds ago, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. Um, be careful with this these IDs. Obviously, you want to kind of make sure that these are are not. Um, you know, these are not things that you share because whatever you, whatever you, whatever rights you've given the user um, through these access keys, uh, they have they have access to everything, right? So this is essentially kind of allowing you to get to the access, get to the API without actually having to physically log in. Uh, so again, you want to protect this access key and this, this secret key, uh, and you can if you if you if you feel like it's been compromised or it's a good idea to maybe periodically get rid of these and recreate new ones. Uh, you saw how easy it was to do that dialogue. You can always just delete the ones that are there and recreate them, come into this dialogue uh, and recreate new ones. So if for some reason you think that somehow someone got access to it. But just remember that 
This here essentially gets you access to AWS as whatever account those keys were created under. So if you happen to have a user that has admin privileges and you, you know, you gave you know, somehow those secret access keys got out, uh, they have access to everything underneath your account. So, you know, you could be in for a rude awakening of being charged for things that you didn't intend on. But so just protect those. Uh, but once you do that, we can click OK. And now we have uh, set up this profile. So now anything that I do through through the AWS Explorer, uh, you'll be doing on behalf of that user. So, for example, I can come in here and I can, for example, drill into my EC2s um, and I can see any kind of um, instances I have running or de declared. Uh, you can kind of see here that um, I don't really have anything currently showing up. Uh, but let's just see if we can get connected again and see here. Uh, so here we go. There's there's my clients. So you can get access and see uh, what 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 resources you have actually declared. I have a, you know, in this case, I've got a couple of EC2 instances. Um, on as a matter of fact, what I'm looking at right here, I'm running it through an EC2 instance. Uh, so that's kind of where you're seeing that there. Um, anyway, so we have access to all of that. Um, and one we're going to talk about mostly today is Elastic Beanstalk. So let's go through how we create an application and deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk. We'll try that now. All right, so here I am inside of Visual Studio 2019, and I'm just going to create a new project. Uh, and the project I'm going to search for is uh, I'm going to search for C Sharp, and I'm going to look for uh, AWS.NET Core Web Applications. So select that one, select Next, and I'm going to call this one my awesome web app. All right, and I'm just going to pick the default here for that. Um, and then keep going here, keep going through the wizard here. I'm going to pick this as an MVC application, uh, so you have access to any of, the, any of these other application types. But again, mostly a lot of the times what I'm working on is these kinds, so I'll just use uh, an MVC. But if you were going to do an API RESTful service, you can pick that one. Uh, if you want to create an Angular app, um, obviously you can pick any of those other templates. I'm going to leave the rest of this all to be the same here, and I'm going to go ahead and create that. Give it a second for it to finish creating the application. Okay, once the application has been created, you can come over here to the Solution Explorer and you can kind of see the uh, the entire project here that you have. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit Control F5, and just make sure it runs locally. Let that thing go. And once it compiles and runs, um, you can, yeah, this is the first time you're using the application. Uh, you can self, you can self, you can trust a self-signed certificate just so for development purposes. It's okay to do this. Uh, obviously, in the real world, you you would have a real SSL certificate, but for development purposes, uh, Microsoft provides uh, one to use IIS Express um, to make it easy for developers so they don't have to worry about signing certificates. Go ahead and say, like yes there, yes. We're going to go ahead and allow that on local host. And if all goes well, we should see our application here. There it is, our welcome page, and everything's ready to go. Okay. So now that we've got, um, we've got, we've confirmed that the, the website actually works locally, and, and such. It's kind of a very simple website. Uh, once we we know that this application works correctly locally, we're going to go ahead and deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk so we can actually put it uh, out into AWS. So let's do that next. All right, so now that we've got the application here um, and we installed the AWS Tools Toolkits, uh, it gives us a few things other than the, like I showed you earlier, uh, the AWS Explorer. Um, you also have a couple other things that it added into our menus. And if you, one of the things is the ability to quickly um, create an Elastic Beanstalk uh, application. So the way you do that is right click on the project, so in Solution Explorer, and you'll see this Publish to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. You're going to select that. All right, and again, it's going to want, want to know which profile. Again, this is kind of your lifeline back to whatever account you're using. Uh, so you pick which profile you're going to do this on behalf of, uh, and then you also pick which reason you want to go to, and you have the option to create a new application. Um, and if you wanted to redeploy, if after you're making code changes, um, you would have the option to redeploy. But since I don't have an application, I'm going to go ahead and select that one first. Uh, I'm going to leave that the same. Uh, you have the option to pick an application. 
um, environment. Uh, so you have the ability through Elastis Beanstalk to set up an application, and those applications can have multiple environments underneath. And you can have a test environment, a development environment. Uh, so it's kind of an easy way to kind of stage things uh, as you're developing uh, as part of the CI CD pipeline, if you will. Uh, but you know, we'll just go ahead and pick Dev, and uh, it, the URL has to be unique. These URLs are unique across uh, AWS, so we just check and make sure it's working. Okay, that's so that that is going to be basically our URL back to our application um, once we're once we're fully deployed, and I just check to make sure that that, that URL is available. Um, it looks good. Go ahead and click next. And here's where you can kind of set up some of how you want the application to be deployed. Um, so I'm doing this application as an ASP.NET Core application, which is cross-platform. So it has the ability to run on Windows, but it can also be deployed to Linux. So I'm going to pick Linux here just so I can have uh, the ability to run this uh, on a Linux platform, not Windows. Um, you have the ability to pick your instance type. Um, I'm going to pick the, I'm going to pick a smaller one here. Let's see if I can find one that's a little smaller. T2 Micro. All right, we'll pick uh, we'll pick that one. Pick T2 Micro. Um, now, when you do this, you also have to pick a key pair. Remember, uh, whenever you're in creating EC2 instances, you have to provide a key pair so that you can we can pass credentials. So just pick pick a key pair you have. Um, I'm going to pick um, one here for one of the client key pairs I, I know I have access to. If you don't do this correctly. Everything will still work, except you won't have be able to to actually shell into uh, these two instances if you ever wanted to. So just it's always better, obviously, to pick a key pair that you uh, have created. Um, anyway, so we do that. Uh, we don't need to use anything special. It's just going to be a single instance. But if you wanted to, you can we can set up a load balancer. We can set up some rolling deployments and some of the other features or capabilities of um, Elastic Beanstalk. But we're just going to pick the defaults here. Click next. Um, we have to give it an application so that uh, it, it has a role to so that the credentials can be appropriately signed to whatever resources we're creating. So uh, we'll just pick the defaults on that as well. Um, click next here. And we're going to go ahead and just, it's a, just leave all these. This is basically telling us how we're going to set it up. So we have the ability to say whether it wants to be a release version or is it going to be a debug version. Uh, what framework we're using. We're using .NET Core 3.1, so we'll leave that the same. And um, leave all that. All, everything else is good here. Here's kind of a confirmation. Let's go ahead and deploy it. So now behind the scene, what's happening, and you can kind of see it in the output window at the bottom here, uh, it's basically building up an entire application package, and it's going to send all of that up to AWS. It's going to store it, and then it's going to then take that app, that whole package and then deploy it uh, according to what we set up. Uh, so it'll take a little bit for that to entire provision, and once it's done, we'll have access to the application. So let's let that run, and once it's finished, we will should be able to connect into the application. All right. So once uh, once everything's done, it's been provisioned correctly. Uh, we should see a couple things up here. The status should say environment is healthy. Uh, so Elastis Beanstalk does have support for doing health checks to make sure the application is healthy. And when it becomes unhealthy, it can react and do things like redeploy a new version or uh, completely rebuild the entire stack, uh, if you will. Uh, but if everything looks good, we should be able to hit our link here, the URL for the application. And let's go ahead and try that. So we'll click it and we'll go ahead and pick Google Chrome. And if all goes well, there's our application. So here it is out on AWS. I automatically got deployed. Uh, and if we kind of want to, we can we can jump over to AWS and actually look at some of the some of what happened behind the scenes. Uh, so here I have uh, the Elastis Beanstalk um, environment. So if you're in AWS, just click on Elastis Beanstalk. This is the environment that we just provisioned through Visual Studio. So it's healthy, it's green. Uh, here's our application name when it was created. I can drill into that and I can kind of see some more health information. I can see what version it is being installed. And, and we can kind of see right here it's using .NET Core um, and it's running on Amazon Linux 2. Okay, so it's deployed to Lens Linux 2. I can see the different events and, and, so, and so forth. Um, I can also go in here if I want. I can I can change the configuration, right? So there's quite a bit inside of Elastic Beanstalk that you do. Um, so the screen from Visual Studio kind of gives you some of it, but obviously if you really needed to tweak this, um, you would have to, you can kind of go into uh, the Elastic Beanstalk's um, console itself and you'd be able to kind of make whatever changes you want. 
Uh, so you can kind of see the health of the system, uh, if there's any kind of health alarms. Um, you can manage updates. Um, and obviously, you can click right and go to the application directly if you wanted to, just like we did. Okay, so with it being done like this, um, you know, again, this kind of gets us a, a very easy way uh, to deploy applications and uh, with, with very little. So it's, again, very little effort on, from a developer standpoint. They don't have to worry about what's happening. In micro, our Visual Studio kind of does most of it for us. Okay, so if I wanted to, I can come in here and go back into my uh, Visual Studio and I can make a change. So I'll come down here. Let's just go into one of the views here. I'll go to the, uh, the home page and I'll just kind of make a quick little change here. I'll call it home page for my awesome app. Building web apps. Give that core. This it's awesome. All right, we'll go ahead and save that. Save all that out there, and we'll just want to now. Uh, since I made that change, uh, if I want to have it deployed, I just come right back in here, publish to AWS Beanstalk once again. In this case, I'll just choose redeploy, and click next, and uh, finish. I don't want to make any changes, and that's going to go off, and it's going to take. It's basically going to update everything in that environment. It's going to zip up a new package, uh, send it up to AWS, and then redeploy it to my Elastic's Beanstalk environment. Um, and it may take a couple seconds for that to go through. Uh, once it's done, uh, we'll be able to see that change uh, out on the website. All right, once it's done, I'll see here that it's, it did the update, uh, it deployed a new version, um, it, run, it, it, it completely updated the environment. For me so everything is ready to go uh, then if i go back into my application and run it i should see my changes there they are there's my, my change i made this is awesome and then obviously also the uh, home page itself my home page for my awesome app is in there as well so it made those changes so again very easy to deploy applications out again more for developers it kind of gives them an easy thing easy way to deploy these applications again it's a platform as a service and um, intended for uh, application style uh, deployments. And that wraps us up. One thing I'll just mention before we leave is it's always a good idea when you do these uh, tutorials and such that you clean up whatever it is that you create. Uh, so if you're not, you're going to be getting charged uh, for the various services. As a matter of fact, if you were to go back and look at um, AWS here, if I go to EC2, part of this Part of this was actually standing up an instance. So there is the application I just created. Okay, so you know that again got created. So while when you do anything with Elastic Beanstalk, any resources you create, it doesn't cost anything for Elastic Beanstalk itself, you know, by itself. But the services and the, and the resources you create, uh, there are you are charged for that. So it's always a good idea uh, to remove um, those applications. Um, so what I suggest is go into Elastic Beanstalk and just uh, go ahead and delete that application or terminate the environment. Uh, once you terminate the environment, it's going to make you confirm. Once you terminate the environment, um, it will then kill all the EC2 instance and any other resources that are created uh, so you won't charge for it. Okay, and that wraps this up. Thanks so much.